Hello everybody and welcome back to Colonial Sports Center. We have an action-packed show for you guys tonight. It is Tyler Gallo and Jack O'Brien. And Jack, what is the action that we have packed into the show? Well, the action that we've got is on both slip, both surfaces, hard, friction and slippery. We've got, a, we've got hockey and basketball, Tyler. That's what I'm trying to say, folks. <laughs> Well, we've got some breaking action for the first time in a long time today. We'll send it over to Sam Dutch, who's got the news. Thanks, Tyler and Jack. Let's take a look at men's hockey for today. The RMU Colonials took that win 4-2-1 against the LIU Sharks. Um, for Robert Morris, Nick Lalonde had two goals and one assist. Grant Eber had one goal, and Santori Hardikainen had one goal as well. For the Sharks, they only had one goal throughout the game by Jack Quinn and 25 saves by their goalie, Vinny Papura. Moving on to men's soccer today. They faced the Golden Grizzlies and they did not have a very good outcome. They 0-5. They took that loss. Um, let's see. John Fainick had one shot and Grant Glorioso had some glory for the Colonials with those five saves. As for the Grizzlies, they had Dylan Borzak had three goals, eight shots, No Jensen one goal, and Owen Smith one goal. Hope they get them next time. Thanks for that, Sam. And we've got so we're gonna head to the ice now. We've got some women's hockey. They were in action a couple times this week, but first off, they took on Mercyhurst, where they had a pretty good, they had a pretty struggling game out there. As you take a look here, they fell four to two. They just have no answer really for the Lakers this season. Emily Curlett and Angelica Diffendall scored, but Summer Ray Dobson had a game for Mercyhurst, scoring a goal and an assist as the Lakers took this one four to two on Tuesday. After dropping their first two conference games of the season, Colonials were trying were attempting to win those two games back against UIC, who had just recently come off two wins against Purdue-Fort Wayne, which is the Colonials' next opponent. But the Colonials fell three to one sets. UIC, I mean, excuse me, Allison Laudot and Alyssa Hudak both had 13 kills for the Colonials. Whitney Brown had 43 assists in those four sets. RMU was outscored 76 to 55 in those four sets. And they strung together seven consecutive points to win the only set they did win, which was the third one. But the story from this one, folks, was that the Colonials did not have an answer for the flurry of points by UIC. The Flames were able to catch fire a couple times, streaking together eight, seven, and six point runs, while the Colonials could only answer with single points. And the Colonials are looking to Bob, looking to better horizons after these two losses, of this first loss, excuse me. Well, they were back in action the next day in the Windy City, and they were trying to split this series, try to win the rubber match. Would they get swept up in the wind, or would they be extinguished by the Flames? Let's take a look at the score of that one. And unfortunately, they were extinguished by the Flames, and they got swept in this sun. Just really a, a struggling performance in these first four games for the Colonials, especially without Emma Granger, who was injured in the first series. I'll take a look here, Londa and Alfano sort of putting together the most offensive output for this team. And Paola Santiago had a weekend. Eight kills and 11 points to go with her stats from the first game. Just an incredible weekend for her. She's having a good season so far for UIC. Well, the women's team might have not have been able to get it done against the Mercyhurst Lakers, but that doesn't mean the men's team fared the same way. We'll get to the results of that one after the break. Jordan knows he shouldn't eat this entire bowl of nachos, but tonight he's earned that right because a few hours ago in the middle of happy hour, he recognized a sign, not from the gods or a bolt of lightning, but from a double heart, a kissy face, and a fourth ha in ha ha ha. That's when Jordan knew he was buzzed. So when it was time to go, he got a ride home instead of driving. Be a legend like Jordan. Recognize your buzzed warning signs and get a ride home. Buzz driving is drunk driving. Freedom, it's at the core of who we are. The freedom to live without fear, to jog where we please, to wear a hoodie. The freedom to breathe. Before we celebrate the freedom most Americans have, we must fight for the freedom all Americans deserve. Because all lives can't matter until black lives matter. I 
first saw a turtle, my heart was full. Not anything but lonely. We had this like deep connection, this heart connection. He just wants to be close to you and part of your life. Every day with turtle is a perfect day. When I'm holding her, it makes me feel calmer. I think everything he does shows how much he loves us. When we adopt a shelter pet, we discover they're a little bit of a lot of things. But they're all pure, pure love. love. Welcome back to Colonial Sports Center. Now we're going to take a look at men's hockey and how they fared against the Lakers as women's hockey was, fell 4-2. But now we're going to take it over to the men's side and see how they did against the same squad. Let's take a look here. There's a pass up the ice. It's going to go in, get into the zone, and there's a shot and a goal from Mercyhurst. Uh, they get off to a quick 1-0 lead in this one. Just a tough outing so far for the Glazers. We take it to the second period here. Four on three for the Colonials. They're going to tie it up, or they're going to get it to two to one here. As a nice shot from the point there from Hardikainen is going to get in there and be tipped in front. That is Nick Jenny in front of the net. And then, of course, the Colonials are furiously trying to come back in this game. Here's a breakaway for Mercyhurst, and a wide open net leads to a score. He's hooked up on the breakaway, but it's off the pad and just easy, easy pickings there for the Lakers and it's going to go across the ice. Here's a shot from the Colonials. It's going to go in and it's going to be 3-2. to two. Now the Colonials were not done yet in this game. One of their best comeback efforts of the season in my opinion as they're just going to continue to put on the offensive barrage here as there's another goal from the Colonials and it's 3-3 and again just a spinorama shot and a beautiful goal there and then it's 3-3 here. Here's a shot across and a goal by Nolan Schaefer and that's going to be the win for the Colonials in that one. They won 5-3. And you know a big thing about that, you have a lot of talent on this Colonials team. And it's not like it's not uh, being recognized on a national scale throughout the entire NCAA. We have a couple Colonials up for the Hobie Baker in this squad, Tyler. And it shows when you can string together a comeback like that, you see all the big guns firing in times like those. That's right. And you take a look here. I mean, while the guy who scored that winning goal, Roman Kramer, did not get onto this list, uh, Nick Perkusik, Grant E. Bear, and Nick Jenny all on this list. And just look how the seasons they're having. 20 points in 17 games for Perkusik, and then of course Nick Jenny having a great season on the defensive standpoint with 15 points, and he's plus five on the year. No, yeah, and a big thing about this is the difference in production from these three Colonials. As of last year, as a total, Nick Jenny had 11 points. He's now at 12 points. He's eclipsed that. We talked about Granny Bears, Granny Bears produ uh, point production and the increase in that. And Nick Prakusik is only eight points away from his career total. And you have to think, again, the na being nationally recognized, this team is now ranked number 19th in the nation. They yeah, were getting votes last week, and now they've actually broken the top 20 in the USHO polls. And it's, a, it's being credited for the hard work this team has been put in, Tyler. Absolutely, and we've seen just how good, I mean, that comeback, there was not one moment where I thought they were out of that game, even being down two. And you take a look here, obviously you're going to get the BCs, the Minnesotas, and the North Dakotas in the top. But being ranked 19th is nothing to sneeze at, as they got 53 points in the USCHO poll, and they're just behind Bemidji State, who's at 75, and AIC, their division foe, is a little bit ahead of them at 17. And you only have to think that the Colonials are only a couple of games away, in conference and out, from getting higher in that poll and being, you know, recognized as this team that demands respect at this point. If we look in the standings, the only team in Atlantic Hockey that's better than the Colonials right now is AIC, who's only two spots above them. Right, and the rankings reflect that. I mean, they have a lot more uh, points in the poll than they do, but as you look at that, I don't think anybody else is going to challenge these top two guys for the division this year. As you look at that, Army West Point is 11, point, 11 conference points behind at 5-4-1. Granted, the teams have had to stop and start with some of their uh, games this season, but Robert Morris and AIC have been jockeying for position at the top of that conference. No, and it seems like it's going to be that way for the rest of the year. Moving on to the women's side of things, they did, they did drop a game 4-2 to the Mercyhurst Lakers, but they were on to the next one against the RIT Tigers, where the Colonials are looking to make a statement win. Here in the first period, we're going to get a goal by Maggie Burbridge as the shot from the point ricochets off a, a Tiger blade, and Maggie Burbridge is right there on the far post. We take it to the second period where Emily Harley's going to give it to Lexi Templeman who puts it down low and it's Maggie Burbridge again tipping it home for the 2-0 lead. You see Burbridge, great position right near that post again and that's where you want to, that's where you go if you want to score goals. The next one to make it 3-2 is Angelica Diffendahl to Kylie Hansick who pulls it to the backhand and chips it past the Tigers goaltender. Great poise by Hanslick to make it 3-0. And here's a blast from Emily Curlett, almost shot that one through the net to extend the Colonial lead to 4-0 as the assist came from Anna Fairman from the point. 
And in the third period, it's going to be Emily Curlett walking the blue line, getting it to the net, and it'll be Michaela Boyle that'll tip it home as the Colonials take this one 5 nothing. Again, a statement win after a shaky loss. Now, the Colonials once again were in action against RIT the next day, looking to continue their fortunes and tame the Tigers in this game. Now, could they put that output to even more goals in that one by scoring a touchdown in this game? We'll take a look and see the highlights from this one. And as you look at this one, Lexi Templeman, her first of the three goals in the afternoon, a tip shot. Look at that funky bounce in front of the net. Opportune right to Lexi Templeman. It's one nothing, and then she's going to get yet another shot that comes off the crossbar from Boyle and goes right to Templeman in front of the net. What another opportune bounce from Templeman. She would have three goals in that natural natural hat trick. The first three, as she just takes that one across and buries it. Na natural hat trick for Lexi Templeman and the captain uh, delivering there. As you get to over the second period. Um, the onslaught will continue as Mara Wagner is going to bury one in front of the net. A nice pass behind from Maggie Burbage and a backhander. She roofs it and that is another goal. It's 4 nothing. Now a shot from the point from Thompson is tipped in by Leah Marino. Nice to see her getting in on the action here as she knocks that one down out of, out of midair and gets it in the net. It's 5 nothing. and then continuing again. Kylie Hanslick with a wrap around a wide open net for her to bury it. The Tigers just had no answer for the clones this weekend. As you see the last goal from Mara Wagner wide open. They were outshot 45-14. Tigers were as the Colonials took this 1-7-0. And something to look back on those wins and kind of reflect on is just the overall dominance the Colonials showed. Not even two big wins, two shutout wins. This is another team that, again, demands respect. This is a team that's loaded with talent. As you can see here, with Penn State being the only team above them, we talked last week how Penn State is the only is was the only team in conference to beat the Colonials. Mercier's being added into that category now. But I, I would say if Robert Morris and Penn State were to play tomorrow, it would have to be a one-goal game, maybe even overtime. Right, and it's just the way that these two teams have played this season, and you know it's just been a wild season for both teams. All right, well, coming up after the break, we have an interview with Caleb Lewis, a former Colonials quarterback. Don't go anywhere. I don't remember how it started. Go to that. Our back and forth. It always came back. Dad! You probably don't remember what you told me. That was perfect. But I heard every word. So recently on Colonial Sports Center, we've had a tough time pronouncing names. You know, everybody just can't seem to get the. Uh, the flair for the names we have here. Supiani Mele. Great. Okay. Number two. Neka Azibo. Number three. Trinity Papaman Jaris. Okay, everybody together now. Santeri Hartikai. Okay, let's get the easy ones out of the way. Number one. Rian Smythe. Mm, okay, Ryan Smith, you're close, oh. you're close, okay. Okay. I'm Number sorry. two. Luck Lynch. Yeah, not quite, not quite, a little closer. Bring it to me. Pete Matus. Ah, Pete Matthews. But hey, you're right there. You're right there. Keep practicing. You're right there. All right, everybody. Last one together. You ready? Coel Chasse. It's, it's Cole Chase. I think we should just, you know, should probably just find some new people, these guys. Welcome back to Colonial Sports Center. And Matt. Caleb Lewis is heading to the IFL with the Duke City Gladiators. The former RMU quarterback Caleb Lewis sat down with Tyler Gallo to discuss his next stop in the fan-controlled football league and his Colonials career. There is talks of a culture shift, which I'm going to get on now. Uh, you came to RMU basically the same season that Coach Clark did, um, and he transformed the team from a struggling NEC uh, team to uh, second in the conference last year. Um, you know, did you feel the culture shift as he was there, uh, or was it sort of the gradual process, like you said? Yeah, I mean, it's a little bit of both. It's definitely a process, but, you know, he set the tone right away for, you know, what the standard would be, you know, as far as work ethic, attention to detail, striving after excellence, keeping each other accountable. Um, between him, you know, obviously the rest of the coaches, uh, and then Coach Day coming in, our strength coach, him and his staff, you know, they really set the standard physically and mentally on how to be tough and, and get in there. But, you know, what it really comes down to is you can have the best coaches in the world, but if your team doesn't buy in, there really will no change will really occur. 
And that's really what we felt like in that off season, um, especially that summer going into the last 2019 season, we had, you know, everyone stayed, everyone showed up at 6 a.m. in the morning to get that work in. And that was why we were prepared to go and compete during the season. Right. And you could definitely, you know, hear guys talking about buying in, especially, you know, when we'd interview them here for uh, CSC or stuff like that. And just, you know, guys talking around the newsroom. But um, what do you think your favorite moment was uh, during your time here? Man, uh, you know, getting, you know, my first, you know, true collegiate start at VMI, you know, against a team that, you know, we knew we were going to win, but, you know, most people looked at it as we were big underdogs. It's a bigger school uh, with some, you know, tremendous tradition behind them. But, you know, getting that first, you know, road win and I don't know how many years, 10 years or whatever it was for, you know, for the school um, and seeing our work against a, you know, a greater opponent, you know, we together, we were able to accomplish something, you know, pretty, pretty special there. Then I think that game too was a catalyst into our NAC play that, you know, we knew we could hang with anybody. Absolutely. And, you know, speaking of first, first in NEC, uh, you were instrumental in snapping the losing streak in uh, 2019, beating St. Francis in overtime. First off, what's the mindset, especially being down late in the game going in like that? And then how did it feel to finally get the, get the monkey off the back per se? Yeah. Um, I say it's, it's two things. It's a, it's kind of a dichotomy between, you know, coach Clark preaches every day of, you know, one play at a time, one play at a time, one day at a time, one game at a time. Um, so, you know, in order to get that comeback, we were down 10 or 13, I think it was, in the you know, late third quarter. Oh, we just – we needed to execute. You know, we needed to focus on everyone doing their job, stay together, and, you know, and then and then still having – obviously having the end goal. Of, you know, we want to win the game, but you got to take care of that one thing at a time to be able to get there. And, you know, guys were making some incredible plays for me. I, mean, I you know, can't do anything alone. You know, and Gonzo on that – you know, on that last catch with however, like, a minute left, you know, to tie the game up to get into overtime – I mean, it was just great execution, and that's what it comes down to. Uh, but, yeah, no, that's fun. As a quarterback, too, like, you never really want to be losing in a game, but also that's – I mean, that's what makes the greats great is you, you know, prepare to get in that situation to lead your team to victory. Like, why – that's the situation you want as a leader, as a competitor, to get that chance. And, you know, thankfully we were, we were able to, you know, make the most of it in that, you know, in that instance. Well, to see more of that and all our other CSN interviews, uh, you're going to want to go to Army CSN on Twitter and ColonialSportsNetwork.com and, of course, Colonial Sports Network on YouTube. Now, when we come back, we're going to take a look inside the minds of a coach. We'll see you after the break. There was talks of a culture shift, which I'm... ...is going to pass it off to that's uh, 21, that's uh, Adamo, and... Uh... Yeah, um... Hey, hey, be good. Keep your head up. Right, let's get this. So to take a look at this goal here, Nick Percusi sneaks it over the shoulder of Logan Drackett to win it in overtime, and the Colonials snap the losing streak, and they'll head on to Holy Cross with a victory. Thank you. Thank you. Today I'm going to talk to you about physics. Come on in, girls. Let's go. This is the first rocket to get humans to Mars. Really tall. I'm a rocket structural engineer designing and building parts of the rocket. You are the generation that will be stepping foot on Mars. Do I have a group of astronauts on my hands? Yes. You can become a rocket scientist or whatever else you want to be. Welcome back to Colonial Sports Center. Now, women's basketball was in action at home looking to extend their two-game win streak, their conference win streak that they recorded against Wright State the week before as they hosted the Youngstown State Penguins here at the UPMC Event Center. And let's take a look and see how they fared in the first game. Now, the first one's going to be a three from uh, Neki Obiazor drops it over to Chelsea Olsen, who's going to nail the three. That's one of her three on the weekend. And then Laura Carrasco is going to drive the hoop and get the friendly roll on that one and get it in there. The Colonel's up 25-18 here. 
Neko Obiazor drives against Holly Forb and gets a layup in there. And it was a pretty close game going throughout as Obiazor is going to get another one on the inside as she was all over the place. 16 points in this losing effort as you take a look here. Uh, coming in on a fast break is Megan Callahan. She's going to get down into the hoop and get a basket there. Uh, just a nice move to get a layup in there for Callahan as she turns around and runs back. And then a fast break for Dahomey Forgues who's going to get her a basket again there. The Colonials would extend their lead even more in this one as they continue to just be off as Augustin gets it inside to Sydney Palermo and another layup as the Colonials continue to put on the offensive onslaught. Here's Carrasco nailing a three from the corner as the Colonials would win this one 61 to 46 as they froze the Penguins. Well, the Colonials were looking to continue their win streak against the Penguins in a matchup in real life that the Colonials would probably win nine times out of ten. But Penguins can be a formidable foe, as this one showed. The first clip here early on, it's going to be Nina Augustin from outside the arc to give the Colonials back that early lead. And then Sol Castro going to work in the paint, as she normally does, extending the lead to 13-6. to Again, great move around the defender, fake the pass, and it's 13-6 Colonials. But the Penguins, late in the first quarter, a deep three by Chelsea Olsen to cut down that lead to four. And the Penguins keep coming from deep. It's going to be McKenna Peters. And then after this, you think it's going to happen again, but no, it's a steal by Esther Castillo, and Natalie Villafort is going to run down, and then it's going to be a strong finish for the Colonials in the first half. The second half will tell a different story. Penguins again from deep. It's going to be Maddie Shears, and then it's going to be Neka Obiazor with a good layup to tie the game, and later on, it's going to be Mary Dunn works her way into the paint as the Penguins complete the comeback and stun the Colonials and split the series. Well, now we're going to take a look at the Horizon League standings as women's basketball and men's basketball have not all off to the best starts. Take a look at the women's basketball standings here. Uh, and RMU currently sits in ninth. Now, every team is going to make the postseason tournament, which is the biggest thing about this. As you see, only Detroit Mercy, who canceled the remainder of their season due to issues with their coach, uh, is out from the season. But as you see, they sit at 3-9 and nine overall. And there are a couple wins, a couple games behind Cleveland State to maybe nab that eighth spot. But it's, you know, they're probably going to be 8th, ninth, or even 10th this season as there's not a lot of season left and not a lot of turnover in this league. No, there isn't. But something you have to look forward to if you're the Colonials is that you do have two games against Purdue-Fort Wayne coming up, which is you're feeling pretty good after getting one from the Penguins. Right, and now we're going to take a look at the games that men's basketball played against Wright State. Uh, without their star, their star forward, A.J. Brown, let's take a look here. The first game, they put up a pretty good performance. Khalil Spear with his best performance as a Colonial, 18 points and 8 rebounds. But Grant Basile was unstoppable. They held down loud in love, but they came back with Grant Basile right there. 29 points and 11 rebounds as he got the double-double as the Colonials fell in Game 1, 79-70. No, but the Colonials were trying to get, again, get a game back. You don't leave a sour taste in your mouth and you lose one. You know you got another game coming up. Sadly, that would not be the result of this one. The Colonials would fall 85 to 56. Excuse me, 86 to 56, a 30-point difference. John Williams led the team with 10 points. The Colonials shot 41.8% from the field and 31% from three and had 27 points off the bench, but... Loud, loud and Love had 34 points for the Wright State Raiders as Wright State shot almost 50% from the field. And again, even though the Colonials had 27 points off the bench, the 21 points off turnovers for the Raiders seem to be the difference in this one, almost a 30-point difference in points off turnovers. And that was the story as the Colonials dropped two to the Raiders in a struggling season. Right, and now we're going to take a look at the men's basketball standings, who they've gotten off to a very rocky start. Granted, they've paused four times, but let's take a look and see how they've fared in the Horizon League play this year. And unfortunately, it's not been the best for the Colonials as they sit in 2-7. and seven. Now, they host Youngstown State and could potentially get into 11th and maybe even 10th this weekend as they uh, host a team that is around them in the standings. And this is a very, very big weekend for the Colonials if they want to move up in the seeds for the postseason tournament. No, it is. And for both programs, respectively, you've got some games where you think you can compete a little better. And again, we talk about how difficult it is to get into a groove and get into a rhythm when you have all these cancellations. If you can string together a few wins, kind of get the blood pumping as some would say. Maybe you can kind of turn this season around. Right, and now we're going to go onto the sidelines and put on the headset as we take a look and see inside the mind of a coach. Take it away, Sam. 
Thank you, Tyler. Just as players are so important in sports, so are the coaches. So, what can the coaches do? How can they prepare their team, and how can they get those wins? First, we're going to toss it over to Austin Bechtold to get in the mind of men's basketball coach Andy Toole. Austin, what do you think? Well, thank you, Sam. But as Andy Toole, my team is 3-9. and nine. We're 2-7. and seven. We're struggling right now. And changes have to be made with a team that's struggling. Look, this team has dealt with adversity with Josh Williams not being on the team anymore after graduating. This team has dealt with a lot of difficulties with the coronavirus pandemic. And they've also gone through a lot with just the overall play of their backcourt, really not stepping up at all. The team has just not been able to do that well. So what I would do as Coach Tool, you have to bench Charles Bain. I know he's a senior. I know he's given some leadership for you. He has not played this well at all. You have to put him on the bench. Don't have him start. Instead, you should start Khalil Spear. Khalil Spear has played great. If I'm Andy Tool, you got to play him. He had a breakout game against Wright State. He's been playing phenomenal, especially of late. He's been averaging 8.6 points total, 4.2 rebounds. He's shooting 57.1%. That's the best on the team. Charles Bain on the other side, 4.1 points a game, 7, 2.6 rebounds per game. He's shooting 28%. You also got to see if Dante Tracy... Give him some more shots and figure out what's going on with A.J. Brom after not playing last week. Get the team back together. See what you can do the rest of the way. Thanks, Austin. Hopefully that Andy Tool can get some better players on the court to get some more points. Back to women's basketball now. Let's see what Luke Yost has for us for the coach. Thanks, Sam. My biggest thing right now about this team is you need a second, maybe a third option to score. Right now, Sol Castro is dominating for the Colonials offensively, and we've seen over the last three Horizon or not or NEC champions, excuse me, in women's basketball, there's a definite strong two. Right? You had in 2018, you had um, you had Jess Kovach and Courtney Zeza. 2019. Neka Zebo and Nina Augustin played really well down the stretch for these Colonials, but it was real. It's been a real struggle with this year for these Colonials to get going. Obviously, they lost Bella Posset early in the season. She transferred. She left, and it's been re it's, again. This team has struggled, and I. What this Colonial team really needs to do is get back down to basics, think about who they are and what they want to be, because right now mid-pack is not good enough for Chai Biscaglia. Mid-pack is not good enough for anybody for the Rob Morris women's basketball team. This is a team that loves to be at the top of the list as far as things go, whether it's points, defensively, and most, most ultimately wins. Sam? Thank you, Luke. And lastly, we will get into the mind of men's football coach Bernard Clark. Nick Hedrick, what do you have? I have where Coach, coach Clark's mindset should be right now. Joe Walton will undoubtedly be the greatest coach in RMU football history for a very long t period of time. John Banizak was also the football coach for a short period of time, but I'm not going to get into that story at all. Coach Clark has a great opportunity after leading the Colonials to their best season in 11 years to lead them into a new conference and ink his own chapter as the head coach of this football team. And he has some good players to do it. Sure, they lost Matthew Gonzalez. They lost Mason Gray. But what they did bring back is quarterback George Martin, running back Elijah Jackson, and some key transfers as well as their offensive line. That's right. They have a very key components to winning in the trenches. But don't take my word for it. Take Coach Clark's word for it tomorrow on Colonial Sports Network, where you can hear about an interview Tyler Gallup and myself did with the coach himself, and not me pretending to be Coach Clark. Thanks, guys, for all your coach input. Now we're going to toss it back to Tyler and Jack for some upcoming games. That's right, and there's a lot of upcoming games this weekend, but the ones I'm looking forward to the most, I just take a look here at the upcoming games. And women's, ba or men women's basketball is going to be in action this weekend, but so is men's basketball. They come back home and take on Youngstown State, as we mentioned before, but also women's hockey is going to take on Mercyhurst at 2.05 on Tuesday. And then Wednesday, women's soccer versus Northern Kentucky and men's soccer versus Cleveland State both on Wednesday as they take on Cannonsburg at the South Point Complex at their new home for this season. No, that's right. And those are our upcoming games for this weekend. We talked it's going to be a crucial weekend for a lot of Colonial athletic programs. It's really kind of a make or break situ it's make or break situations for some of them. Again, with uh, with men and women's basketball, you think of the adversity that they're the adversity that they're going to have to fight through, and also the guts that both of these teams are going to have to show in their upcoming games. We're still very early in the season, though, and that's something to keep in mind because. We've seen stranger things. I mean, we've seen teams go from last place to first place. You know, we've seen um, 
to all these crazy different uh, probabilities that do play out sometimes. And who's to say the Colonials aren't outside of that standard? Exactly, and you know, as they as they get into these late conference games and early ones, there's gonna be a lot of turnover. But unfortunately, that's all we have today for Tyler Gallup, for Jack O'Brien, and for everyone upstairs. We'll see you next week. Stay tuned.